Uh, excited for this great opportunity tomorrow against a really good Texas A&M team. Uh, quick turnaround, having just played them two weeks ago. Uh, you know, number one offensive rebounding team in the country. Uh, do a terrific job taking care of the basketball and getting to the free throw line. And uh, defensively, I think fantastic in disguising their coverages, mixing their defenses, uh, make it really difficult for you to score on that end of the floor. So, uh, you know, expect a, a great crowd, great energy, uh, and hopefully we can keep improving and, and build on uh, the great win we had Wednesday night against uh, Ole Miss. I know you played them only two weeks ago, but what are the challenges of playing them that quickly? I mean, is, is it almost like more of a chess match than it normally would be? I don't think so. I think all that stuff gets overrated at the end of the day, whatever happened in the first matchup. Uh, you, know, you learned some things. There were some things we did well. There's some things we really need to correct. I'm sure they would say the same thing. Uh, but it'll just come down to which team plays the best tomorrow uh, for those 40 minutes. I mean, uh, they've only played, we've each only played three games since. Uh, their game against Kentucky Saturday was high level college basketball game. It was awesome to watch. So we know the challenges they present. Uh, you know, they rebound at such an elite level and their physicality uh, will have to be locked in and, and, and ready to compete for 40 minutes on the glass. Yeah, just I guess how would you assess maybe how your backcourt's developed and you know the chemistry wise since getting Jalen back in the fold now having four or five games together looks like Mike's a little bit more comfortable off the ball but can also handle it some as well. Just just what did you make of just kind of the Williams Cook Wright Hannibal kind of you know quartet that has worked been working for you guys? Yeah, I, I like the way our backcourt's been playing. Uh, I think playing well together. Um, I, I really thought our perimeter defense was was good uh, against Ole Miss talented guards on Wednesday, and we know Radford and Taylor is as good a backcourt combo as there is in the country. Uh, so that'll be important coming in. Um, I think the story's kind of the same for us, Glenn. When we've taken care of the basketball, we've been able to be pretty efficient on the offensive end. Uh, we, we've turned it over too much in our last two games, and that's cost us some. Uh, and then defensively, uh, we've sent our opponent to the free throw line way too much over the last two games. And that's one of the many strengths of A&M. So we'll have to do a much better job there. Uh, but overall, you know, really pleased with the chemistry there uh, of our guards and how well they've been playing together. Yeah, Coach, uh, how pleased were you uh, with the Ole Miss game uh, with your front court, uh, Will and Jalen and Hunter, just the activity level that they had on the glass and on defense? Yeah, there was a lot that stood out there that I liked. You know, I thought, you know, looking at Jalen Reed's defensive performance coming into that game, Jalen Brakefield, I think it was averaging 20 a game over his last six games. Uh, and he got to the free throw line and converted, but he was one for eight from the floor. Uh, you look at Baker and Dean both had eight rebounds. Uh, Jalen Reed had seven. Then you had Jordan Wright, seven rebounds in there. Uh, so we'll need huge efforts from them again on the glass uh, tomorrow. And then, you know, I thought it was a big key. We were able to get uh, both Cissé and Sharp out of the game. And they went to the small ball uh, lineup. And I, th I thought that opened up the floor for us to be more efficient offensively in the second half. And, and I think that was a credit to the production of our front court. Hey, Coach, last time you played a and uh, it's kind of a story of a second half turnaround on offense. What do you do this time to make sure it's a 40 minute effort on offense? Yeah, well, th they'll have a big say in that as well. I think they're fantastic defensively. Uh, but the biggest difference was we finished plays at the rim in the second half uh, and, and did a better job taking care of the basketball. Uh, their, their rim protection is, is really good. Uh, but, but I think, I, I want to say I have to go back and look. I think we had 11 layups or dunks in the second half, and that really helped us extend our lead there. What is it about those half times? Is there a lot of teaching? Is it just kind of a reset moment for y'all? You have a limited time window, um, but you're just trying to identify a couple things that you did well, and then a couple areas where you, there needs to be some correction. Uh, 
and you, you got to get it done in a short amount of time. So uh, I'm sure every coach and staff in America does it differently. We like to show about five video clips of, of things uh, that we want to emphasize for the second half. And you know, I think to our players' credit, over the last month, they've done a really good job uh, not only coming out of halftime, but out of timeouts, uh, being locked in and focused on doing the things we need to do you know, to give ourselves an opportunity to win. You can tell that the team is kind of coming together and everybody's having you know, big moments, I guess. Who do you think is kind of on the cusp of, of really emerging or, or developing into the player you want them to be? Well, I think you have to start with Jordan Wright with his efficiency over the last month. I mean, he just played in a game where he had you know, 27 points, seven rebounds, seven steals, and five assists. You know, I think a stat line that hadn't happened here in, in, in I want to say, over you know, two decades. So uh, I think he's been terrific. Uh, but I, overall, I think it's just been, been a great team effort. Uh, we still have a long, long way to go, but the foundation of it has to be how hard we play, uh, how we compete, and then that we play together. And I think we've gotten so much better in those three areas and need to continue to improve them, uh, especially as you look at the opponent tomorrow. When you're defending a guy like Wade Taylor who can both score and also get other people involved really well, does it become a matter of taking one or the other away? Like, how do you, how do you stop that? I don't have the answer. I mean, he, he does everything well. He shoots it well from three. He's taken 12 threes a game in league play. Uh, he's really crafty and creative, scoring off the dribble in the mid-range game. And I think he's as good as anyone in the country in, in drawing fouls and getting to the free throw line. So I think you just have to work and, and try and make it as tough a, as you can. Uh, but I mean, the guy's coming off 41 points this week in a game. So terrific player. You talked about building the foundation, but but you're going to start getting more attention, you know, obviously because of the success that you've had. Is that something you speak to the team about, about handling the success, or is it too early still for that? I don't know. We, we talked about it a little bit after the, the opening conference win, uh, just staying focused on doing the things we need to do to keep getting better as a team, stacking days, building the consistent habits, uh, continue to develop the relationships, uh, off the court so we can develop the trust that we need within the team uh, to keep getting better. And we just always look at it as, I always say it, and I know it's boring, but just going 1-0. and It's 18 one-game seasons. Every game stands on its own. Uh, I don't think a and M's going to play any harder because we won the first matchup. I think they play hard every night because that's their culture and it's what they do. And that's what we want to establish here. Uh, is that you, you come out every night and you play every possession uh, like the game depends on it, because it does. They lost a tough one the other night at Arkansas. Do you, do you feel like your team, when they lose it, a tough one like that, that they next game out is kind of kind of a, not a make or break, but they're out to prove something like you just said. They Maybe not to prove that you beat them that first time, but they had that tough loss the other night. Yeah, I don't know, Sheldon. I mean, that's probably a, a, a better question for Coach Williams and their program. I just think, you know, watching them, you know, over the years, that's just that's who they are. It's what they do. Uh, they're relentless in their effort. Uh, they're incredibly physical at both ends of the floor. Uh, they're always one of the top rebounding teams in the country. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not sure what their mentality will be, but but we know we're going to get their very best and. Uh, they're one of the top 25 offenses in the country, despite not shooting high percentage from the floor because of their ability to rebound better than anyone in America. Uh, they don't turn it over much, so they don't beat themselves there, and they get to the free throw line. So uh, we got to be really locked in on doing the things we need to do uh, to give ourselves a chance to win tomorrow. You got a bunch of upperclassmen, even if they were transfers, and after a couple losses, maybe early in the season, you attribute how you're playing now to those upperclassmen and, and being able to instill that mentality, you have to go one and know every single week? I'm not sure. We, we tried to be intentional and in starting the program over to get some older players uh, through the portal, some, some guys who'd had success at other places. Uh, and with that, still comes a lot of challenges. We got a bunch of guys who've never played together, uh, we got a bunch of guys that I've never had the opportunity to coach. Uh, so we're trying to learn every single day. 
Um, but I think you know the key for us and the improvement we've made to this point, uh, all that credit goes to our players. Uh, we talked about it once final exams ended. Uh, back in early December, we had about a 50-day window uh, before the spring semester would start back up. And you know, I think our players worked extremely hard over those 50 days, invested a lot of time, uh, and worked with great intentionality to try and get better. And so, as always, you know, and we'll keep saying, we got a long, long, long way to go and a lot of getting better to do. Uh, but because of the hard work and time they've invested, uh, we, we've made a lot of improvement as a team. Uh, you, you mentioned the free throws there kind of in your opening spiel. Uh, I think the last two opponents, 60 free throws for, for Auburn and Ole Miss, just in a and another team that gets the foul line a lot. What's been the common theme, do you think, just in looking at back at the film of what has been com uh, causing so many of the fouls? Well, the, s the second part of it is we got to defend the free throw line better. I think they're making like 92% of them. So somehow we got to get them to miss some. But um, I, I, it's just part of it. I think two really good teams in Auburn and Ole Miss uh, with physical front courts and really highly skilled guards on the perimeter. And Texas A&M checks those same boxes as well. So I think just being more disciplined, uh, doing a better job containing the ball off the dribble, trying to stay out of rotations, uh, and, and doing a better job you know, of not, uh, not bailing the opponent out uh, around the rim, which I think has been a problem for us over the last couple of games. You talked about Jordan, and you talked about the hard work that they put in. What is, I'm guessing that's part of it, but what has been the difference, I guess, to his game kind of taking that next step? Uh, I think, you know, and it, strange to say as a fifth-year senior, you know, I think his pra practice habits have gotten better as the season's gone along. Uh, but just overall, it's the offensive efficiency. He's been our leading scorer majority of the season, uh, but through about nine or ten games, was down in the low 30s uh, from a field goal percentage standpoint. I just think he's such a better player than that. And, you know, as you look since, you know, mid-December, He's up around the 50% from the floor. He shot it well from three. I think he's done a great job getting to the free throw line and converting there. And you know, the, the one thing that has been a surprise, honestly, for me is, is his buy-in uh, and ability to defend. He has 40 steals uh, to this point, seven steals in the last game. He had another game where he had six steals. Uh, and, and I think that's become contagious throughout our team and has become a strength, the ability to force turnovers on the defensive end. Hey, Coach, um, <clears throat> is there an update on Carlos Stewart? And uh, also, it didn't look like uh, Damian Collins was suited up last game. Yeah, Carlos has been out with uh, knee soreness, uh, was back in practice yesterday. Uh, would it list him as questionable uh, for the game tomorrow. Uh, Damian Collins still continuing his rehab uh, from the dislocated shoulder he suffered back around Thanksgiving and uh, still day to day there as well. Do you think Jordan, that efficiency is he's not forcing up as many bad shots because he's got help around? Is that? Well, I think overall as a team, I, I think we've learned how to play better together as a team offensively. You know, you look back those first 10 games and it seems like a long time ago, but our assist to turnover ratio was pathetic. You know, and so we weren't creating high quality shots. I think our spacing's much better. Uh, I think our movement of the basketball has improved. Uh, we've gotten better offensive rebounding, so we've created some, some better scoring opportunities there. Uh, so I, I think it's just a combination of all those things and shot selection is certainly a part of that as well. All right, thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon.